All right, guys, happy Wednesday. I'm going to start right with a question of the day today, which is, would you make the argument that America is a better country than Saudi Arabia? It might seem like a strange question to be on my mind today, but I'm thinking about it because I can't stop thinking about the conversation that I had with Andrew Tate, a particular portion where he told me that he converted away from Christianity because, well, the West is an example of Christianity, Christian nations in the West, and that that experiment, Judeo-Christian beliefs, backing being the reason that a country was built, has clearly failed. What do you think about that statement? Would you argue that we're a better country than Saudi Arabia? Plus, later on in the show, obviously, I have an opinion regarding Lizzo being sued for allegedly forcing her dancers to eat bananas from sex workers' vaginas during a wild trip to Amsterdam. I think actually you're going to be quite surprised by my take on it. All that and more today coming up on Candace Owens. I think by now 3 million people have watched my interview with Andrew Tate, and the single most compelling piece of that interview for me was when I prodded him on the reasons that he left the Christian faith. Obviously, I am a Christian, and it saddened me as I expressed to him to hear that he had left the faith, but his reason was something that I could not ignore or something that I could not rather stop thinking about. He essentially said, and I'm paraphrasing here, that Western nations are an example of the Christian faith, obviously. We are proud Christian nations, especially here in America. We always talk about the founding Western philosophy backed by Judeo-Christian beliefs. And look around us. Is this an example of Christianity winning? He talked about how Jesus Christ is allowed to just be openly mocked and how that could never happen in a Muslim country. And I thought that was really interesting and it made me really think about the ways in which Christianity has failed in terms of standing up for itself. I want to be clear, this is not me making a statement that I'm going to convert to the Muslim faith whatsoever. Rather, it is me really wanting Christians and Americans at large, even if you identify as an atheist, to think about that. To think about people around the world who see us as an example of faith, as a pillar of Christianity, as a, as a pillar of Judeo-Christian beliefs, and all that has brought to the West. Now, it also brought me back to a conversation, a very similar conversation that I had earlier, four years ago, actually. You might know who Zuby is. He has now become a really big social media personality. He is a rapper. He has a podcast. And four years ago, I sat down with him in London, and I discussed this very topic with him, and I was a very ignorant, I would say, and arrogant American, American when I sat down with him. Because Zuby's interesting. He is Nigerian. He has a... British family, part of his family is British. So he got to grow up in Nigeria, in the UK, and then he spent a large portion of his childhood in Saudi Arabia. And so I was looking at him brown-eyed and bushy-tailed and said, oh gosh, tell me about Saudi Arabia. It's gotta be so terrible, so horrible to grow up in Saudi Arabia. Talk about that. Now you're free. You're back to being in the West. The West is the best. Rah, rah, rah. And here is what Zuby said to me. Take a listen. It was really cool to grow up there because having grown up there and then also being someone whose family background is originally from uh, Nigeria, I've had a lot of access and exposure to three different cultures throughout my lifetime. So I've seen the the British system and the British way of doing things and the um, pros and cons of that. The I don't even want to say Nigerian, I guess Igbo, like even Nigerian itself is very, very diverse. Um, but in Nigeria, there's a different way of doing things and the systems are a little bit different and there's different values and ideas and stuff that comes with that. And there's pros and cons to that. And then also with Saudi Arabia, which I think is, um, in a lot of ways, I think it's quite a misunderstood country. It's one of those countries where people tend to have really strong opinions on, Mm -hmm. despite having very little information, let alone experience about. So with most countries... People don't really have like, if I ask you, you know, I don't, if you ask somebody their thoughts on Estonia, most people, unless they're from Estonia, don't really have any opinion or assumptions or whatever. With Saudi, everybody thinks they know the whole story. Right. They think they know everything about it. There's been a media fascination with Saudi Arabia. Exactly, exactly. So I often find myself defending the country because people I find have a lot of false assumptions or misinformation about it or whatever, or they think that they only see the downsides and they only see the negatives of the way that some of the things are done over there. And, um, you know, having lived there, there are, you know, just like most 
places I've been to. There's things I like about it, and there's things I dislike about it. There are a lot of problems, for example, that you have in the Western world, some of the biggest problems that you have in the Western world that simply do not exist there, largely because of the way they do things. So Saudi, for example, of course, the country is like 99.9% Islamic. There's no separation of church and state. The, you know, the laws in the Quran are the laws of the country. Everybody's religious. Everybody fears God. Um, super strong family values. And yeah, it is, it is strict in a lot of ways compared to the liberal Western world. Um, and you find that people in the liberal Western world can only see the downside of that because they're kind of viewing it through their own lens and perspective, which is natural and normal. But you have to remember that for people who live in a country like Saudi Arabia or similar, they look out to the West and at some of the things that are going on here and some of the problems that people are encountering and the way people are behaving. And they're like, what on earth are they doing? Right. Well, we could use a little theology over here, I think. Yeah. A, right? little, a little more theology. I yeah. Mean, it's, it's, if I, you know. yeah. I mean, so if you look, if you look at um, a lot of the big problems, say, in the UK or the US, okay, um, broken families, mm -hmm. homelessness, drug addiction, um, alcoholism, and, you know, all the problems that are related to these things, kids being born out of wedlock, um, you know, unplanned pregnancies, which then leads to abortion and a whole cascade of other social issues. Yeah. A lot of those just don't exist there. Well, because okay. it, we're, we're so, so secular, right? Yeah. So it becomes like this first, and we used to not be, obviously, mm. this is that we um, we built everything off of Judeo-Christian Judeo values, but it starts from first the, the, the fall from God, mm -hmm. then the fall from the family, mm -hmm. right? Then the draw towards government mm -hmm. and, and the expansion of government, and everything else becomes absolutely insane, mm -hmm. right? So I can see that perspective of the West going crazy because yeah. we we have, and, and they, st they stigmatized God, and now we are in the process of seeing they're stigmatizing family. Mm -hmm. Unless your family is weird and disruptive and you've got, you know, um, a mom who doesn't shave her armpits and has pink hair who's married to <laughs> a trans man woman who was a guy yesterday but yeah. is a man today um, and has adopted a child mm -hmm. um, from a country for which, for, uh, which, with which they don't speak the language, from which they don't speak the language, uh, then you're not considered the right kind of family today. Yeah. I mean, well, that, I that's really what, that's the direction we're treading in right now in, in Western civilization and it is nuts. Now I want to be clear. That is just a small snippet of a discussion that went on for about an hour and 20 minutes. You can find it on YouTube. Just search Candace Owens and Zuby. But he made it clear that he is proud to live in the West. He's happy he lives in the West, but he sees the West and Saudi Arabia as two opposite extremes. We have this idea that we live in a nation, well, at least we're not Saudi Arabia, our views of a theocracy. And I would never make an argument that we should return to a theocracy. But look around us. Evil is abundant. Is this really freedom or is it actually bondage? Are we now bound to a perverse society? Let me give you just one example of a video that is making the rounds on TikTok and on Twitter right now. Uh, viewer discretion is advised. Take a look. <laughs> Now, in case you are listening to this on audio, what we just showed you was a 10 second snippet of a woman twerking her butt cheeks on what looks to me to be a nine month old boy who is just sitting there somewhat confused about why any adult woman would be shaking their butt cheeks uh, while somebody records it and she puts on her shades. I guess this is supposed to be funny. I guess we're supposed to laugh. I guess we're supposed to say, thank goodness we have so much freedom that we can abuse children. Because that's where we're at right now in America. We are now openly abusing children. And we're being told that we need to be accepting of that because if you hold a different viewpoint, well, what are you, a Bible-thumping Christian? What, do you want a theocracy? You're backwards. That's from yesterday. Who wants to live like that in a world where adults can't twerk on children? I'm about to show you another video of a man that is chest feeding. He cannot produce any milk. He makes that clear in the video. But he identifies as a they. He's non-binary. So let me show you an example of they chest feeding an infant child. Take a look. Oh, I have to put it over here. The baby has been able to latch, but I've not been able to produce any milk. It's okay because we're going to supplement the feeding with formula so that 
my baby is still getting the, the nutrients that they need. I appreciate you so much for all your work. And I appreciate you also, baby. I couldn't have done it without you. We don't live in a moral country anymore. We live in a country that is guided by immorality. Yes, we live in a country in which the government is more concerned with removing children out of homes if their, chi if their children are not being vaxxed according to the government schedule. Yeah, you're not, if you're not, not going to give your child the vaccines that we created with Big Pharma, which give us profits, then we have a reason to remove your children from the home. Then we will threaten you if you say that you refuse vaccines with CPS. But this, this we allow. because this is America, home of the free, right? This is supposed to be the home of the free. As I said, this is not freedom whatsoever. This is bondage, and we are all now being bound to perversity. How are we being bound? Well, by companies in lockstep allowing this stuff to take place. In fact, the threat is not that that individual is going to have their children removed. No, the threat is that I'm going to have this clip removed from YouTube for talking about the child abuse, because the ideas are supposed to stay silent and we are supposed to remain complicit with everything that we see happening around us, which is something that I refuse to do, obviously. Something needs to change, and that's something I believe begins with Christians not being fearful to talk about this stuff anymore, not being fearful to talk about what exactly transgenderism is, not what exactly homosexuality is, what exactly it means when adults are putting their body parts on small children. And that's all I have to say about that. Because of you, Preborn has rescued over 28,000 babies this year alone. Right now, hundreds of thousands of mothers are awaiting the birth of their precious babies, and thousands upon thousands of babies are taking their first breath. Your impact reached eternity. Now is the time that we need to be more determined than ever to save the unborn children of the world. Thanks to Preborn, we can do just that. For just $28, you can introduce at-risk babies to their mothers the cost of dinner to save a life. Because once she sees that precious life and hears that heartbeat on ultrasound, she is twice as likely to choose life. So I was just getting on my feet and I met someone and I got pregnant and I wasn't ready. How am I gonna raise a baby? And I barely can take care of my daughter and myself right now. I Googled abortions and I scheduled an appointment thinking it was an abortion clinic. They did my first ultrasound. Seeing the, the ultrasound, it impacted me to the point to where I broke down crying. The nurse reminded me that it was a blessing from God. I was thinking about if I wanted to keep the baby or not. When I was at the clinic, after they told me how far along I was and that the baby had a heartbeat, I cried and they gave me a minute by myself in the room. I broke down and I prayed to God. I asked the Lord to, when I walk out of those doors, to just give me the strength to be able to go through the pregnancy. I made my decision at that time. Women's Center called me out of the blue and said that they had a lot of stuff for me and they would like for me to come in. They gave me cribs and diapers and so much stuff. It's amazing. It touches my heart. It makes me feel special. It makes me feel like there's people in the world that does care. They gave me hope, the strength to believe in myself that I could do it. Treasure I chose because I know that she was a gift from God and she's just gonna be a treasure. I'm super grateful that I'm able to go down this journey with my daughter and I'm just super glad that I didn't have an abortion. I've learned how to trust God, how to listen to God and to trust myself and to do the right thing and not be selfish. It feels amazing. Please donate a gift at any amount that will go directly towards saving babies' lives. Just dial pound 250 and say the keyword, baby. That's pound 250, baby. Or you can go to preborn.com slash Candice. That's preborn.com slash Candice. Okay, now it's time for some topics du jour. All right, let's just start or stick with rather the idea of Americans being ignorant because it's true. Americans very often never leave their home state, let alone see other places within their own country. 
And then even fewer, obviously, leave the United States and go see other countries. So our understanding of culture comes from TV. It comes from American sitcoms. And so basically everything is a stereotype. We have no idea what goes on in the rest of the world. And we assume that we are allowed to behave and act and dress and do whatever we want, like we're allowed to do in America. In America, we can twerk on babies. Woo! Try that somewhere else in the world, and you might get into some very severe trouble. Well, there's one woman that learned this lesson the hard way. Um, She was visiting Dubai. And I'll give you the story. She's originally from Houston, and she's now trying to get back to the United States because she has spent two months detained in Dubai because she raised her her voice. Now, it's important to note that this woman is a black woman. Her name is Tierra Young Allen. And why I think it's important to note that she's a black woman is because I speak often on this show about the fact that amongst all the races in America, it is particularly black people that are being told that we can behave however we want without consequences. This came, obviously, with the rise of BLM, right? You upset about something? Go take a flat screen TV from Target. Somebody else will pay for it. You have a right to be upset. Somebody died that you didn't know at the hands of a police officer? You better run into Gucci and grab yourself a handbag and no one can say anything to you. And if they say anything to you, you just be sure to call them racist. That's how it works. You just say race, 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 throw down the race card and people do whatever you want really in America because they're so fearful of that word. Doesn't really work overseas, least of all in a place like Dubai. So yes, the incident started for Tierra Young Allen. She's a TikTok influencer. And by the way, if you look back into other videos, she tends to behave a little erratically places like Puerto Rico. But again, she was in Dubai vacationing and they had a rental car and they got her and her girlfriend got into a car accident in this rental car. Authorities then impounded the car and her belongings were taken by the rental car company. Now, she then went obviously to the rental car agency and said, I would like to have my belongings back. And they said to her, you're going to have to pay us to get your belongings back. I don't know what their rental car policy is in Dubai, but apparently for access to her items, she was going to have to pay some sort of a fee. And she didn't like that because they had her ID, they had her credit card, and she was not about to, despite the fact that she smashed up their car, pay any undisclosed fees to have them reclaimed. Now, this is when she got a little ratchet. She started yelling at the agent, and the agent subsequently called the police and she was arrested because in Dubai they have immorality laws and it is illegal to yell in public and it is especially prohibited if you are a woman. Uh Uh-oh. So she's been detained for two months. Now, of course, the American perspective would be like, what sort of a country would allow a woman to be arrested for screaming after she crashed a car at an agent who's telling her that, yeah, you, you owe us some money here. We had your vehicle's been impounded. This is a a rental car. Have you no shame? I know that's going to be probably the American perspective because our brain has been warped a little bit. But wow, imagine a world where people were just not allowed to act ratchet in public and scream at people in order to get things done. It's just interesting to consider. Imagine if you knew that screaming in public at someone, yelling at someone behind the counter would get you arrested. You probably wouldn't do it. You probably would act more civilized. And that was the point that Zuby made when he came on my podcast. Later on, he said to me, in growing up in Saudi Arabia, he said there were no crimes because people knew that if you stole, you'd get your hands cut off. So who's going to steal? No one's going to steal because you go, oh, you know what? It's actually not worth it for me to steal this item from CVS. I don't want to have my hands cut off. That doesn't seem like a, a, a even trade there. So there's no crime. So I'm assuming there's also no people yelling. She has found out the hard way. Obviously, her parents are upset about this. They've spoken out, saying how emotional the experience has been. They've stayed up crying all night. Now, The truth is, is eventually she probably will be released, obviously, and she will be let back into this country. And it will waken her up a little bit in the same way that it woke Brittany Griner up just a little bit when she came back and she realized that she was a brat who couldn't even stand for her flag. She couldn't appreciate her freedom because she didn't even know what freedom was, right? She had no idea. She had, had, had never had any struggle because she grew up as a privileged brat in America. And now Brittany Griner stands for the flag. I'm going to bet that Tierra Young Allen will have a new appreciation for her freedom in America. I'm going to bet that she might adjust some of her ratchet behavior. I think two months in prison for her is probably going to be a good experience. In a foreign country, probably going to be a, a, a transformative experience, rather. And she might, again, c- come back and be a better person. So she really effed around and found out. 
Speaking of people that F around and find out this story, Lizzo being sued by three of her dancers. And it's interesting. The story is interesting. And I know everyone's going to think that my take is that Lizzo is guilty as charged. Actually, far be it from my take. I do not believe that Lizzo is guilty as charged in this case. I'm going to run you through what is actually going on. Um, So she has these dancers. We've covered them on the show. Lizzo looked all around the world for fat girls to dance on stage with her, right? And these fat girls danced very provocatively on stage with her. I would almost say that these fat, these fat girls basically put on a sex show next to Lizzo as they tour the world. In fact, let's take a look at a clip of these sexy dancers dancing on stage with Lizzo. <laughs> She's in like a booty hurricane. It's like a booty twister. Ah! <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. Kids are into it. Anyways, she she scoured the earth looking for some booty clappers to dance on her. And she specifically wanted these girls to be fat. That was the whole point of the documentary that she did. I think it was called like this one's for the big girls. Well, some of these big girls are actually turning on her uh, after she fired two of them. And then one of them quit in solidarity with the other. And what they are alleging is that they felt sexually denigrated and pressured to participate in a disturbing sex show in Amsterdam. So apparently they went out on the town in Amsterdam, specifically to the red light district. Okay, and at some point in this area that's known for its sex theaters, we all know what the red light district is. Right. At some point they were in front of nude performers, catching dildos from the performers. And Lizzo encouraged one of them to eat a banana that was protruding from one of the performers' vaginas during this sex show at one of these sex theaters with one of these nude performers. The suit claims that Lizzo allegedly pressured and goaded Ariana Davis, who is one of the plaintiffs, to touch one of the nude performers' breasts. The plaintiffs claim that just a month later, Lizzo deceived them once again into attending a nude show, thereby, quote, robbing them of the choice not to participate the document state. Ariana Davis also claims that at one point she had no choice but to soil herself on stage during an excruciating re-audition, fearing the repercussions of excusing herself to go to the restroom, which is just weird. Okay, so Lizzo eventually fired Ariana Davis. This is the reason that she is now launching this lawsuit against her for her past behavior. And part of this lawsuit, by the way, I should make it clear, is that they are claiming that white management demoralized them, that because they had these uh, white managers, uh, they were racist toward them because they told them how they should behave on tour. It sounds like the woman in Dubai they probably were just told that they couldn't be ratchet. And maybe the manager was white who said this to them. But now they're launching essentially a lawsuit saying that it's racist and it's sexual harassment. Now, here's my take. Obviously, according to me, this is a frivolous lawsuit. OK, it's a frivolous lawsuit for a lot of reasons. First and foremost, I just showed you them dancing on stage. These women put on a sex show. They were not offended to go to a sex show. These are grown adult women. They knew exactly what it meant when Lizzo took them out on the town to the red light district in Amsterdam. They knew that there was going to be nude performers, basically what they are. They were going to see versions of themselves in this foreign country. And I'm guessing that Lizzo was being a cool girl. This one's for the big girls. Let's all go out. Let's all go out to a nude show. Let's just see what Amsterdam has to offer. And they were all into it. Absolutely. They were probably all drinking. They were probably all drunk and they all had a wonderful night, laughed, smacked some nude butts and breasts, uh, drank a little bit more. Oh, my God, is that a banana coming out of someone's vagina? Oh, my God, it's the best. I'm on tour with Lizzo. I love Lizzo. Mm. They all had a great time. That's what happened, okay? And then months later, maybe years later, I don't know how long ago later, this girl got fired, and suddenly she's now recasting. Oh, my God, that's right. Well, you know what? That was actually kind of inappropriate when she took us out on the town in Amsterdam. And I'm going to sue her now because that's what I should do. And what else can I sue her for? Oh, also, there was a white management people that once told us that we couldn't be ratchet. And that's actually racist. So here's the thing. Do I think Lizzo is guilty of what she's being charged with? Nope, I don't. But I do think that it's good for people to die by their own sword. If Lizzo should be charged with anything, it's discrimination against skinny people because she only wanted to hire fat people. What she got 
are people that are essentially focused on all of the same things that she's focused on, ridiculous leftist causes and social justice virtues, right? We want social justice. We're not worthy of this job, but we have learned that if we say words like you're fat phobic or I love being fat or I'm a black person, black lives matter, then I will get whatever I want. She hired these people. In fact, she scoured the earth for these people. And by golly, Lizzo, you got them, okay? So this is an example of the left eating their own. That is it. They are now going to eat Lizzo. Seems like a tall glass to order, but they're going to do it because they don't care. This is It is a mind virus leftism, okay? They don't care that Lizzo is on their side, that Lizzo hired them for the same BS reasons, the same BS thoughts that they have. They now think that they are or that they should have something that they didn't actually earn. And Lizzo, unfortunately, is probably going to have to give it to them. So what happened is she's going to settle in this case because she was foolish enough to take them to a sex show. Wouldn't happen in conservative land. But what do I know? I, what do I know? I'm, I'm, I'm just a conservative. All right, you guys, moving on. I can't believe this. Philly, Philadelphia, a place that I once lived just a few short years ago is hosting something that you've never seen before. It's going to be amazing. In fact, I think I need to go. It's the first of its kind, a fat-focused convention. It will be held at no other place than Temple University. Yep, they are calling it FatCon. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, who's not excited for this? Okay, here is how they are are, um, marketing it on Instagram. So they've already secured the handle Philly FatCon, which is great. Introducing hashtag Philly Fat Con. Keynote speaker is the fat sex therapist. I didn't even know there were fat sex therapists. Are you guys excited? I'm excited. Well, her name is Sana Lee. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say her? Uh, this, this is a they, 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 he. I just saw that. Don't kill me, YouTube. Uh, they, he, they is Sana Lee Rochetoir, an award-winning clinical social worker, sex therapist, adjunct lecturer, and grassroots organizer based in Philly. They are super fat, queer, bisexual, non-binary therapists, okay? I'm going to read that again. You're wondering what they are, they being that one picture you're seeing of this person. They are a super fat, queer, bisexual, non-binary therapist. Get your therapy, y'all. Also, the co-founder of Radical Therapy Center, specialized in treating sexual trauma, diet trauma, racial or immigrant trauma, Oof. And South Asian family abuse while offering fat positive sexual health care. VIP ticket holders, if you've got money and you rich, you will get an opportunity to chat with Sana Lee, the they, the, they, he, during the meet and greet in the VIP lounge. I need tickets. I demand tickets. The Daily Wire doesn't send me this. I am six months pregnant. I'm feeling super fat. And I want to meet they, he, Sana Lee, Rashatoire, because I want to know what it means to be a super fat, queer, bisexual, non-binary therapist. And I want to know who, who are Sana Lee's clients. I want to know what they talk about. Like I, I have questions and I need answers. And I think I should start a GoFundMe to go to this event because I want VIP tickets. And if Billy Wires can send me, I think if I start a GoFundMe, I can go and enjoy the, I'm, I'm only going to get fatter. Okay. I'm only going to get fatter. So more power to FatCon, guys. I, I, I advise you get your, I know you want to go. I advise you get your tickets right now or they're going to be sold out. See they, he in person. What if there was someone out there who kept a log of every single thing that you did every minute of the day? I think that would be pretty creepy, right? But what if I told you that's exactly what happens every time you go online? Your internet provider is allowed to store logs of every website you've ever visited and can legally sell this data to anyone. That's why I always use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN reroutes your internet connection through their secure server so that your internet provider can't see or log what you do online. Many of you might be wondering, if you're routing all of your data through a VPN, doesn't that mean the VPN can see what you're doing and log your data instead? And you're right to think that. Many VPNs claim to have a no-logs policy but have been caught logging customer activity. ExpressVPN was the first major VPN provider to engineer all of their VPN servers to run in RAM. This makes it impossible for their VPN servers to store any data, including logs of any ExpressVPN customer. ExpressVPN is so confident in their no logs claim, they even had one of the biggest assurance firms, PricewaterhouseCoopers, audit their technology. Protect your data today at expressvpn.com slash Candice. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Candice to get three months free. 
Visit expressvpn.com slash Candice to learn more. All right, guys, it is time to read some of your comments. These are all regarding Ariana Grande, who is, in fact, a homewrecker. Funny TV parts writes, as a formal, <laughs> as a form, formal slime ball, I faced a similar scenario and was greatly embarrassed, which contributed to my journey away from being a complete loser. It's very sobering when you encounter your fantasies and find yourself wishing you could be invisible. That obviously is a response to, I asked, if you're a slime ball and you're like, yeah, I would love this opportunity to sleep with someone who dresses like a porn star, how do you actually feel when they dress like this in public? And so this person is answering, yeah, you're greatly embarrassed because you should be embarrassed because what person would dress like that in front of children and not feel that they were violating those children in some way? This is a, a movie theater. This is where families go. Have you no shame? Do you have any dignity? Laura C. writes, the sad part is, I bet she wondered. I bet there were times she felt weird about Ariana, but told herself, don't be insecure. That man is weak and pathetic. So better to know sooner than later, but what a shame. Yeah, Laura, I agree with you. I, I bet his wife, Lily J, did wonder at times, or maybe she didn't, which makes it even worse. Maybe she just was so amazed that there was a celebrity acting this kind, and maybe she too was sort of starstruck and was like, this is amazing. Like Ariana Grande, she's a co-star, and now she's being so kind. I bet she didn't suspect a thing. I bet, I think you you just, you could never imagine that sort of evil. I, I wouldn't. <laughs> I could never imagine that sort of evil coming from my partner. I couldn't imagine that in my postpartum phase, my husband would introduce me to a woman and allow them to hold our child and then check up a relationship with her. I, that, it's something I could fathom. So I think she probably just appreciated it um, because I, I personally feel that there's no time that women need other women more than in that newborn phase because men are a little helpless, don't really know what to do with the newborn, and women just give you all the advice and you kind of just want to be around so many females. And she probably felt like this is amazing. And I think in one of the articles, she intimated that Ariana Grande talked about how she wanted kids while she held the baby and she was so sweet with her. So we are really talking about an act of evil. Uh, Deja Vu writes, silly little man, the fact that he found a wife who was able to give him a child is a blessing on its own. Leaving your family for a woman you just met is such an ignorant thing to do. Home records will always exist if weak men and women exist. That is right. And that is why I said yesterday he is a weak, weak man. And we are facing a crisis of weak men everywhere. And there needs to be a return to masculinity there. And uh, what it means to be masculine is to lead your family, among other things, it means to lead your family with nobility, right? Especially when you become a father, especially when you become a father, right? You are thinking, you, you put yourself last, you make sacrifices for your children. You go to work, you go to war, you do whatever it is that you have to do to make sure that your family unit is safe first and foremost. As I said yesterday, this little dweeb will obviously not end up with Ariana Grande. He looks like he has bad breath. She's not going to stay with him, obviously. That's not going to be a thing, right? And I hope that Lily J becomes a strong enough woman throughout all of this, and she will be strengthened, strengthened by all of this, to not go back to him, to not allow him to say, oh, it didn't work with Ariana, the, the, the cute girl who looked at me, and to then fall, find himself back in her arms. Uh, women should not, because he's already proven himself to be utterly unworthy of anything. Last comment coming from Camera. She writes, I've always loved, oh, he writes, sorry. I've always loved Ethan Slater. I was a huge fan. I'm a theater guy of his work and remembered when he married her and was geeked out when they got pregnant. Their relationship was absolutely beautiful and I'm extremely disappointed in him and Ariana. Yes, absolutely. It takes two to tango. And he obviously is more disgusting than Ariana because it was his family. Uh, but Ariana, let's not let that slide. Ms. Feminist, you are rotten to your little bratty core. Baruch Assault vibes all the way. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for today. As a reminder, A Shot in the Dark is available now on Daily Wire Plus, so be sure to click the link in the description and subscribe right now. And also be sure to come back tomorrow because as usual, we'll have a brand new episode. See you guys then.